Hiya, my name is David McCalmont, and I'm here today to speak to the readers of Drowned in Sound about a song that I wrote in, 1990, in 1994. Um, it, was, it was issued in 1995. Um, I am one half of um, McCalmont and Butler, and the butler is Bernard Butler. And we wrote a song called Yes, and people were very impressed by my performance on that song, and that's why I became a vocal coach years later, because um, people kept telling me that I had to... Um, Tr transmit those techniques to others um, and um, I've actually um, become a better singer because of it because it's enabled me to understand my voice a lot more and um, before I um, actually sing some of the song for you um, there are some things that um, I'd like to communicate to you um, I think that different singing teachers and vocal coaches will say, put these things in a different way but um, I just want you to um, understand how I see it and um, I hope it's useful um, if you want to sing along to this record and it's been a bit of a struggle. I know it's very um, complicated, it's a struggle for me. Um, I, it starts very, um, it, it starts reasonably high in my range and um, I move into falsetto and uh, that means that I have little room to maneuver and I think I probably, um, the highest note in yes is probably the highest note that I have. Um, but then that is very... <laughs> much um, the way that I write. I mean, if, because I have the notes, I tend to use them, which isn't always the best idea. But um, I do recommend that a uh, performance by a guy on YouTube called Callum McDonald is absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't know how he managed it, but he manages to sing yes and play guitar at the same time. And um, I, actually, I actually invited him to sing it with me on tour once, so I just had to meet this guy. And um, he's a really lovely chap, so um, check him out. Now, um, I suppose um, I sing yes with two voices. That sounds a bit odd because um, it's not a duet, of course, but um, I'm aware of two sections of my voice um, being at work on yes. One voice is the voice that is known as the chest voice, i.e. the voice with which I speak. Um, it's called the chest voice because if you um, put your fingers there, you can feel a vibration when you have a conversation. And um, that means that the sound, the vibration of the vocal cords here, is using this as a sort of a resonator. The chest is a sort of a resonator. Now, if you think about the guitar, um, you the acoustic guitar, you have the neck with the strings on it, and then you have that section called the belly with a hole in it. And if you twang the strings, it's the hole that provides the, the, sorry, the belly that provides the amplification. And if you took the um, belly away and you just had the strings, you would still get sound, but it just wouldn't be as resonant. And so that's the way it works. In here, you have a mucous me me membrane that's actually quite vile to look at, I, but I, I don't like to look at it. It looks a bit like um, vibrating chicken giblets or something. <laughs> and, um... Oh, do I mean fillets? Well, e e e either way. And uh, they vibrate, but without the chest, they wouldn't make as much sound. So the chest enables that sound. And then, um, so that's the voice with which we speak. There's a voice with which, with, with which we don't speak. Now, I don't go around speaking to people like that unless I'm feeling particularly silly. Now, um, one thing you'll have noticed there was that my eyes did that. Now they do that because when you actually raise the eyebrows there, it alleviates some of the pressure on your on on on, on the throat. Um, and um, some of us um, do that naturally. Um, it's actually, it's also something that can be taught. But um, that's where um, I end the song in that sort of um, Smokey Robinson territory. I feel well enough to tell you what you can do so um, that is the voice with which we don't speak. It's also known as the falsetto. It's the falsetto because it's not the mucous membrane that I, that, that, that I spoke about in here, in the um, voice box, in the cylinder of the neck. You've got the mucous membrane there. So look at my throat now. Ah, that's the voice with which I speak. Ah, 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 
see it changes ever so slightly because it moves to a different part of the throat. And that's why they call it the falsetto, because it's not the voice with which we speak, it's the voice with which we don't. Otherwise, it's completely valid. I spent years thinking that the falsetto was somehow a crime because it was called false, but that's not why it's called false. Anyway, so I sing the, sing the song in those two voices. What becomes essential, then, is that I breathe, um, and I breathe well. Um, you can inhale through your nose, but um, that slows down the breathing slightly. You can breathe in through your mouth and devil, in the devil may care way, the way that you do when you speak. But the most effective way for a singer to breathe is against a soft palate. Now, the soft palate is... Um, uh, if you open your mouth and you run your thumb against the top of your mouth, I, I, you feel a hard bit at the front. But the further back your thumb goes, you come to a soft bit. And so when you breathe, you open your mouth nice and wide as if you're going to yawn. And you make sure that the air hits that soft palate. And that's the most effective way for a singer to breathe. Um, you know, do that as an exercise. Um, do it sitting down to begin with because it can make you slight, um, slightly lightheaded. Um, it was recommended to me that a singer be hydrated, and it's also great if a singer is fit. Um, that's when the voice works really well. Um, the only other thing I would say as I play the introduction and start singing it is that I'm going to indicate where I am. Am I in my chest or am I in my head? I'm going to show my chest um, singing there and my head singing like that. Now the other thing to remember is the importance of imagination in vocal performance. Because when I speak to you in those terms like chest, pitch, the voice with which we speak, um, it all sounds quite technical. But if you use your imagination, if you imagine that your um, uh, uh, singing voice is coming from this vibration here, particularly with regard to the voice with which you speak, um, that's uh, that, that I've always found an, an, an effective thing to communicate to um, my students because um, it helps. So um, even if the notes go higher, it doesn't mean that you have to go higher. It means that you have to go deeper and become more reliant on your resonator. And then the head voice is um, the vibration is kind of up here somewhere. So you go, ah! The ligamental, um, uh, the ligamental section of the voice box is resonating in this head. You, know, it, it, you go, ah! You feel no vibration in your chest at all. That's because it's stupid, because because the um, area of uh, resonance, the resonator, has shifted upwards. Okay. So um, one more thing, and then um, I'll do some singing. Um, it's important to listen to the music that you're singing to. And um, it helps you to stay in tune. What I've found is that sometimes I become so distracted by what I want to communicate with my voice, that I get so into my voice that I actually stray from the um, path um, of, the of, 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 of the music, of the arrangement. So um, I find that it helps to um, make sure that I find room in my concentration. And singing is multitasking at the end of the day. You've got so much to think about. Breathing, which voice am I using? Am I listening to the music? Is, is my addiction right? Um, and uh, if you listen to the music, I tend, I find that the um, tuning, the pitching, tends to be better. So here's the introduction. And sorry that it's taken me so long to get to this point, but um, I just wanted to communicate those things to you, and it's a video. So you can uh, listen to them. So, 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 the voice with which I speak, so. Okay, so that's the music now. So you want to know me now, how I've been. You can't help someone recover after what you did. So tell me, am I looking better? Have you forgot whatever it was that you couldn't stand about me, about me, about me? 
Yes, I do feel better. Yes, I do. I feel alright. Yeah. I feel well enough to tell you what you can do with what you've got to offer. I'm just all in my in my head now. And breathe. I'm That's Now at this point, <clears throat> um, you can do. But I prefer to, <coughs> excuse me, I prefer to um, breathe in between those notes because um, otherwise my throat feels completely mangled and you're hitting the same notes over and over again and you begin to feel a kind of a <coughs> in the back of your throat. So this is how I prefer to do it. I feel bad enough to tell you what you can do. Be bad, be bad. I feel bad enough to tell you. So, um, that's how to sing yes. <laughs> it's bloody hard and good luck um, with it. And um, um, good luck to um, us. Good luck to me as well. Singing that um, seven nights in a row on the tour from the 1st of November to the 7th. But I hope, look forward to seeing you all. And I know you're all going to sing along. Whether um, you mangle your vocal circuitry or not. I can't wait. See you then.